All right, so this one says, find the left, right, midpoint trapezoidal sums. And we're gonna state whether they would be over or under estimates too. Um, for this function on the interval zero to six, we're gonna do three equals sub intervals. So you have to get all of those heights of the, um, of the rectangles or the, the bases of the trapezoids. So I'm gonna draw a picture, I like a visual. A lot of people will just end up drawing a chart. I'm gonna do both and you can kind of decide which one suits you better, but you have to get those values, you know, somehow. So we're gonna plug in the values from zero to six to this function. So if you plug in zero, uh, you're gonna get 36. And this is an upside down parabola. So, you know, it's, it's gonna do something like this just to have a visual of that. It's, it's an upside down parabola moved up 36. So the other side of it would be going like this, um, but we're only looking from zero to six. So if we plug in one, uh, that is gonna give us 35. And if we plug in two, uh, two squared be four, I'm gonna make it negative. So negative four plus 36, that would be 32. If we plug in three, this would be negative nine plus 36, that would be 27. If we plug in four, we're gonna have negative 16 plus 36, that would be 20. If we plug in five, we're gonna have negative 25 plus 36, that would be 11. And if we plug in six, um, we're gonna get zero. So six is gonna give us a zero. I always write the zero. Um, and I did whenever we were going over this example too, like whenever we were doing this one, I still write the zero because it's part of the pattern. Um, and you wanna make sure that you've accounted for all the sub intervals. So even if it's zero, I still write it in. So I like the visual because I like to see what the graph is doing. If you're like, I don't wanna draw all that, Ms. Cole, the other thing you can do is just make a chart. Some people like the chart better. Um, and you can just plug in the values like this. So whichever suits you, um, you know, again, personal preference. I usually have about half the class want to do this and about half the class want to do this. And so we're going to do um, all four of these sums. All right, so first we need to figure out what is the length of our sub interval from zero to six. Okay, so that's six units long. It says we wanna do three equal sub intervals. So if I do three equal sub intervals, how long is each sub interval gonna be? If I split this into three, um, what is the length of each sub interval? Yeah, good too. That wasn't a trick question, guys. The length of the interval was six and we're dividing it into three sub intervals. So six divided by three would be two. The first sub interval is gonna be zero to two and then the next one's from two to four and then the next one's from four to six. So um, I'm gonna put that out front. That's the length of each sub interval. Um, and the other problem we were doing, it was a, a one fourth. Uh, this time it's a two. All right, and so for the left sum, we're gonna use the left side of each sub interval. So that's gonna be the 36. And then for this sub interval from two to four, the one on the left is the 32. And then for the sub interval from four to six, here, let me cover up the rest of it. If you're just looking at this third sub interval from four to six, the number on the left is 20. Like you're literally just picking the number on the left. And you know, if the question is free response, you get to just leave that. Remember not simplifying your answers. You can just leave that alone. Like that's a totally acceptable answer. Um, and would it be an overestimate or an underestimate? This is where the graph kind of helps. If you're looking at the graph and we did a left sum, is this gonna be over or under?
Yeah, good, over. The graph is decreasing. So if we take the left side of each subinterval, it's going to be the higher up part. So that's going to be an overestimate. And then if we do a right sum, you know, the, the subinterval didn't change. We're still doing the same problem. So that's still going to be two. And so when you look at the first subinterval, with the right sum, you're going to use the number on the right. Um, so hey guys, what's the first number that we're going to put into our sum here? Yeah, good. Just pull the number on the right. So 32. And then when you look at the next sub interval, you want the number on the right. So it's going to be 20. And then for the last sub interval, it's going to be zero. And so since the function's decreasing, when you take the right side, that's what's lower down. So that's going to be an underestimate. All right, midpoint sum. The Sub interval is still two. We didn't change that. Now we're going to use the number in the middle. So, hey guys, when we look at the first sub interval, what's the number in the middle? Like, what's the first number I'm going to put into this sum here? Yeah, good. 35. It's not a trick question, guys. Do you see how 35 is in the, like, this is the left, this is the right, and then this is the one in the middle. So, 35. And then for the next sub interval from two to four, um, the number in the middle is 27. And then for the last sub interval, the number in the middle is 11. Now this one comes down to concavity. Since this is concave down, this is gonna be an overestimate. But again, that's really hard to tell. And you're so unlikely to be asked that. Like the, you can pretty much guarantee you're not gonna be asked that. I'm, I'm bringing it up just to be thorough, but you're, you're not gonna get asked. All right, and then trapezoidal. So remember your formula for a trapezoid is right here. You will have to memorize this. It's one half height and then add the bases together. So we're gonna have one half and then the height is the length of the sub interval, which in this case is still two, we're still doing the same problem. And then when we add these up, we're gonna use the ends once and then all the ones in the middle twice. So it's going to be 36 plus double the 32 plus double the 20 and then the zero just once. So the only sum that you use these numbers in the middle for is the midpoint sum. Other than that, you really don't use them at all. And for trapezoidal, since this is concave down, that is going to be a really slight underestimate. So for this next one, I gave you the chart, which is nice. You don't have to plug in those numbers on your own, but they're all provided. So it says use the four sub intervals indicated in the table. So these are the four sub intervals. Um, to do a left Riemann sum, is it an under or over estimate and justify? That means write a sentence, okay? Here's the thing. We're not gonna be able to write this abbreviated. You're gonna have to do all four of them separately. Um, why? How come I'm going to have to do all four of these separately? I'm not going to be able to write it factored like this. I'm going to have to do four totally separate uh, rectangles for this. Um, why? Yeah, the intervals are different. Like this isn't uniform. Zero, three, eight, ten, sixteen. It's not counting by the same amount each time. All right, so we're going to have to do them individually. So first sub interval from zero to three, that's a length of three. So that's the, the base of the rectangle. And then for the height, it's going to be one of these two numbers. They said to do a left sum. So the number on the left is 10. And then the next sub interval, let me cover up everything else. It's from three to eight. So that's a length of five. So the base is five. And then the height, again, we're doing a left sum. So I'm going to use the one on the left, which is 12.5. And then the next sub interval, eight to 10, that's a distance of two. And the number on the left is the 17.5. And then the last one, 10 to 16, that's a distance of six. The number on the left is 28. Don't bother adding all of those up. There's, there's no point in it. If it's for your response, just leave it alone. But then we're gonna state whether it's an under or overestimate and due justification. It's based on whether these values are increasing or decreasing. So is this function increasing or decreasing? 
Good, 10, 12, 17, 28, 46, good. Increasing, so doing something like this. I'll just usually set my pencil down and look at it. So the function's increasing. We did a left sum. So is it gonna be an over or an underestimate if the function's increasing and we use the left side? Good, the left side lower down. So that's gonna be, I would literally just use your pencil. This is what increasing looks like. This is what decreasing looks like. And you can just look at the left or right side. All right, so we are going to say this is an underestimate. Because f of x is increasing. And it is a left sum. So those are all the things that you need to mention to get full credit for it. Like what the answer is, the function is increasing and which kind of sum it was. Right, so letter B, use the four subintervals indicated in the table. So I already have those circled uh, to do a trapezoidal sum. It's going to be a little bit of writing for this one because you have to do all four of them separately because the intervals are not uniform, right? Um, and I basically threw this question on here just to practice doing the trapezoidal formula again because you have to memorize it. So the more you practice it, the better. So one half. And then the height is the length of the sub intervals. So for the first one, from zero to three, that's just three. And then you add the bases together. So 10 plus 12.5. So that's the first one. Three more to go. All right, so plus one half times the next sub interval is five. And then we're going to add 12.5. Plus 17.5. Gosh, I better write smaller. Or I'm going to run out of room here. All right, and then the third one, um, the length of the subinterval from eight to 10, that's two. And then again, add the bases together. And then the last one from 10 to 16, that's six. And then 28 plus 46. Yeah, you know, I feel like that's usually the way it is, is that easier things are more writing because you're not actually doing any work, you're just writing it all out. But like, this is literally the answer. Um, I love these on the AP exam. They're usually worth at least two points and you'll get all of it because you just, it, you just, it's process driven. You just write it all out. All right, so we're embedded with this. This is the definite integral is the last thing we're gonna look at here is we said, how could we make these estimates? Because everything we've done here so far is an estimate. It's not an exact answer. Um, we said, how could we make the estimates better? And it's if we do more sub intervals. So a definite integral is going to give the exact area under a curve. Everything we've done with the left, right, midpoint, and trapezoidal sums, those are all estimates. A definite integral will give you the exact answer, and it is when the subintervals approach infinity. And if that feels like a limit to you, a limit is something goes to infinity, you're right. And we're going to look at that on the next page, right? Um, if you have an infinite number of sub intervals, which don't think about it too hard because our brains really can't handle infinity as human beings, we just can't. So don't, don't think about it too hard. But if you have an infinite number of sub intervals, you will get the perfect exact answer. And so here's how a definite integral gets written. It's an integral from A to B. It's a starting place and an ending, place, ending point. It's this um, like a swirly little S thing. It looks like, uh, does anyone play the violin or you've seen a violin in your life? It's like the symbol that's on a violin. Um, so integral from A to B, F of X DX. The F of X, that's the function that represents the height of the rectangles. Remember we were plugging in to F of X to get all those heights and I highlighted them. That's what I, I highlighted was, was all of those heights. We plugged them into F of X. Dx, let's, have you ever seen delta x? Like delta means change in, it's that Greek letter that means change. It's the change in x, that represents the base of the rectangle. So it's base times height, and this integral is indicating we're adding them all up from A to B. So starting here and ending here. All I need for you to be able to do for right now is to be able to set it up. We're eventually gonna solve them, um, but for right now, I just want you to be able to set it up. So I want to set up the one from the very first problem that we did, like on the very first page. Um, the interval that we were doing there was from zero to one. 
And the function was the parabola x squared, and then you would put a dx. That's all I want you to be able to do at this point, is just be able to set it up. So it was an integral from here to here. This is the function dx. I also want to show you how to type these in your calculator, um, because you do get a calculator a lot more often um, in the second half of the year than the first. And you are going to want to know how to type these. If you have your calculator, get it out. Um, you, you are going to need to be able to do this. This is not going to be an optional, like, oh, I'll just do it without the calculator. You're going to need to be able to do this. Um, your integral is in the math menu. So if you hit math, and we had actually looked at this earlier this year. Do you remember when we did n derive? We did a derivative. Now, your calculator won't find a derivative, but it'll find a derivative like at a number. So like it'll do a derivative at x equals 7 or something like that. If you go down one more, it says um, fn int for integral. So it's math 9. So math 9, get comfortable with that. That's going to be like your best friend. So math 9. And then you can just type this in. And when you hit enter, it'll literally just give you the answer. And it is the perfect exact answer of the area under that curve. Just so cool, like geeks me out, I love it. I know, like I'm a math teacher nerd, but that's so cool. All right, so this gives you 0.3 repeating. The answer is a third. That is the exact answer. Oh, why did I put negative a third? Yeah, I'm a negative, there we go. Uh, one third is the exact answer for that. And if you look back at the estimations that we did, they were all pretty close to the third. Um, like this one, what was it? 0.28, we said that was an underestimate. And then we had 0.46, that was an overestimate. And then these ones were a little bit better. This is very slightly under 0.3 repeating. And then uh, where's this one? 0.343, so very slightly over 0.3 repeating. So that'll give you the exact perfect answer. So all I want you to be able to do for these, we're not gonna actually work out the problem. I just want you to be able to set up an integral it's just to get you used to the notation because I realize it's totally brand new to you. So for this one, it's gonna be integral from uh, one to five. So we want from here to here, so one to five. And then you just have to figure out what that function is and then put dx at the end. So this is an upside down parabola. I'm gonna need a negative since it's upside down. And this vertex, it looks like we went right three and up four. So if we go right three and up four, this is really just remembering your transformations. Right three and then up four is gonna look like that. Um, and I put the squared in to make it a parabola. You put dx at the end, that's it. That is all I'm looking for right now. And if you're super curious about what this exact area is, you can put that in your calculator in Math 9 and it will give you an answer. All right, and then for this one, this is gonna be integral from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. And then which function is that? I know you're like, it's either sine or cosine. I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna tell you, like, you know, I'm your teacher, I'm gonna tell you, but what do you guys think? Is that sine or is that cosine? Good, nice job, guys. Nice. Um, sine starts at the origin. That's how I remember them is where they start. Sine starts at zero, zero, cosine starts at zero. And then dx. This one, I do want you guys to type in the calculator. Can everybody type this for me? Let's go ahead and type this one in because I like this answer. This is cool. This is another thing that just geeks me out. All right, so um, go to math nine and we're gonna do negative pi over two. Pi is um, pi is right here. It's the, the exponent key, but you have to hit second. So it's seconds uh, and then the exponent key. So negative pi over two uh, to positive pi over two, cosine of x. And so when you hit enter for that, you get two. This answer is two, like this area exactly is two. That's so cool. And if you were to split it right here, this part would be one and this part would be one. It comes out to that exactly, it's so cool. You can disagree, but I'm right, that's cool. It just is. All right, a couple more of these. 
Um, this one, actually both of these, we're gonna have to split. It's gonna be two separate integrals. This one's gonna split at zero. So first integral, and where did it say this one is starting? So from negative one to two. So we're gonna start at negative one and then go all the way to two. So this is the area that we're trying to find. So if we split this, um, the first integral is gonna be from negative one to zero. I'm gonna split it right here. So negative one to zero. And then that function, this is just the line. Um, it's, it's a line with a slope of one and it is moved up one. So that's gonna be x plus one is that graph and then dx. So that's gonna give us this first little part. And then we're gonna add on the next integral. So, hey guys, what are gonna be the boundaries for the next integral? This is gonna be from where to where. Good, nice, zero to two. Perfect, nice job guys. And then um, I just need that function. So it is again, a negative parabola and it is moved up four. So negative x squared plus four dx. And again, that's all I'm looking for right now. It's just, can you set it up? And then this one, we're trying to find the area from negative two to three. So that's all of this. And you have to break it at the discontinuity. I know that seems silly, but because there's a hole there, you're gonna to have to break it into two separate integrals. So what are gonna be the boundaries for the first integral? If we have to break it right here. Yeah, good, nice. It'll be negative two to two. And then this function, so this looks like we have a negative slope, a negative one slope. So it's gonna be negative x plus, uh, what is that y intercept? Three, negative x plus three dx. And then um, what are gonna be the boundaries on the second integral? I think we're all gonna take care of all of this here. All right, from two to three. And it's the same function, so I'm just gonna recopy that. So negative x plus three dx. So if you have a discontinuity, you just have to break it into two separate integrals. So like this or like this. All right, and then this last thing that we're gonna look at, they may throw like one question like this on the AP exam. So I wanna make sure that we cover it, but I don't want you to overly stress about this. I copy and pasted from the, from the AP objectives, this you can read that if you would like to. Um, what they're having you do is take the Riemann sum and write it as a definite integral. And they just look really awful and nasty, but this limit as n goes to infinity, we're making the sub intervals go to infinity. That's what this means. Limit as n goes to infinity means we want an infinite num number of sub intervals. And then this is sigma. Um, that means sum. It means you're adding up all of the rectangles. You're adding all of them up. And then this is your function. And then you have this, you know, uh, what do they call it? Del delta X is what they call it at the end. All right. Um, and they say delta X equals uh, B minus A over N. All right. I mean, break this down into something that like might sort of make sense because I realized that these all just look awful. And what really frustrates me is they have all this awful notation for something that's really quite simple. All it means is you're adding up an infinite number of sub intervals. That's all that it means. And sorry, I'm trying to talk and write this at the same time. So it's not a good idea. So go ahead and write that part down. So limit as n goes to infinity, we want the sub intervals to be infinite. This sigma means that we're adding them up forever. So that's what these things mean. And then you have the function of this stuff. So whatever's inside the function, that's gonna be x because you want f of x. I'm <laughs> remembering this from a long time ago. All right, so that part's gonna be x. And then you're gonna have delta x at the end. Let me do an actual problem um, so that you can see what this looks like. But the only thing is this delta x here has to match this delta x here. 
So if it doesn't, it gets sort of weird. And this last one, they don't match. So, so it ends up being a little strange. But looking at this first one, all you have to do is write it as a definite integral. Um, so A is going to be wherever this starts. We want this to be from A to B. So A is going to be this first number right here, which is 2. And the delta x in this case is 5. And do you see how that matches there? You have a 5 over n and a 5 over n. So if we're starting at 2, and we want the, the length of the interval to be 5, then this upper boundary is going to have to be 7. So we started at 2. We want the length of the interval to be 5. So 2 plus 5 is 7. That, that, the most math you did was 2 plus 5. And this, this looks so scary. Right, and then all the part inside of here, that part's going to be x. So our function is ln of x, and then you throw a dx at the end. That is literally it. Um, so it looks really intimidating, but what you're actually doing is not that horrible. So like looking at the next one, what is a going to be? A is this part that's right here. So can you guys find that for me? What is a going to be? Where, where are we starting that? Good, negative two, it is right here. It's just this number, so negative two. And then we want the length of the interval to be three. So if we start at negative two and we want the length of the interval to be three, what is this upper boundary gonna be? It, good, that would be one. So negative two plus three is one. And then all of this inside stuff, that's gonna be x. So our function is two x and then throw a dx at the end. So it's really like a puzzle. You're just putting everything in, in the right place. Now here's what's tricky about this one. Do you see how this five over n matched the five over n and this three over n matched the three over n? They changed this one. It should be one over n. So this part is what's gonna be x. So it's not the whole thing now, it's just that one part. So your function is, because we had to make it match with a one. So I had to leave that, that three kind of out of there. So the function is gonna be square root uh, one plus three X DX. And these are usually multiple choice questions. So like, honestly, if you figured that out, you could probably start narrowing down your, your choices, right? The lower boundary is gonna be zero. If you look in both of these, you had like two plus something and negative two plus something. This part that I circled, it's nothing plus k over n. Uh, so there's nothing there. And then we want the length of the interval to be one. So that is gonna have to be one. So zero to one of all of that dx.